Hi, welcome to this session of Paint This with Jerry Arnell right here at the Yarnell School of Fine Art. Well, as I promised, we're going to start a brand new painting today, and it's going to be a little unique and kind of fun, uh, different, and something we've done in quite a while. Once again, I want to remind you all that we're still are continuing uh, working on some paintings uh, for each of the 50 states, and I'm still kind of working on that. I'm just not doing it in sequence like you might think. I'm just you know, I'm a typical artist. I wake up one day and I'm in the mood to do this or that, whatever, and that's the artist's prerogative. That's why we call it artistic license. Do what you want to. So what I'm doing now is taking a little break from that, and I'm trying to do some things even in my own world on to improve my photographic memory. And we just, you know, done a painting already with the windmill, if some of you saw that, and how to kind of do that from just scratch from your mind, things you've seen and remember and just by not looking really at any reference material and then unless it's a little sketch or something you made from scratch just like we're going to do today so let's talk about this what i've got here is a and i'm not even sure what you would want to call this you know the tuscany theme has been around now for many years it's been a real big thing in the art world but this is like a little part of a little european village or part of a little street scene completely made up from scratch i have nothing to look at except my little sketch over here that I made up just setting, setting down in my studio and then in just a few minutes made a little sketch. So what I'm gonna have is an old building, part of an old building, close up, not gonna be any depth in this painting. We'll have the old, some old steps, some old stone, stucco, brick, you know, they made this whatever they could. So I'm gonna have a combination of stucco, stone and brick we're gonna have the old tile roofs, you know, the little red clay tile roofs on the on the roof lines up there. Gonna be the arch door with the stone around it. And this is gonna be called the blue door. We're gonna make a bright bluish turquoise door. We're gonna have some little pots, different varieties and colors of pots with flowers and you know bushes coming out of them. Probably some hanging ivy or vines coming down. And then we'll have our maybe a few stones here at the base of the steps and then some gravel or dirt on this little roadway or walkway, whatever you want to call this. So what I did was I just piddled. I just played with that until I came up with a composition that I like based on my knowledge of composition. Now, and that's based on just all the things I've done over the years and the places I've been. That's what I'm saying. If you want to improve your memory, and we all need that, believe me, when you get, to get our age, but the thing about an artist, it's really good to practice having some sort of photographic memory. So that's a good thing to do. I didn't have anything to look at. Now, there's perspective involved. So if you think about where your horizon line is, probably right about midway, the angle of your steps, so you're going to slightly angle back towards the horizon. The tops of your roofs are going to angle down towards the horizon. So there is some perspective going on here. That's what will give this an interesting effect. You can see the side of the building, see the angle going in this way, this down here, then below the horizon, everything will kind of go up. See down here at the base, goes up this way, little uh, pathway here. And the only difference between this and this little sketch I did is I've added a couple of small buildings here. And by the way, we may not do that. Again, artistic license, when I get this going, we'll see, it may change. I may just put bushes here or I don't know, maybe some distant hills. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. Could put in a fence right here, a little picket fence just to block that off, like this is a little courtyard or something. We'll play with that when we get to it. I'm not even sure. So if you guys are ready, I'm ready. Let's discuss the canvas now. This is a 16 by 20 uh, canvas board. Now I might mention to you why I'm using a board this time instead of a stretched canvas. It's got a harder non-give surface. So when you're doing buildings, Things like that, or I, especially when I do my wildlife on a real professional level, most wildlife artists that I know prefer usually a harder surface because they get a little more detail. And uh, so this doesn't have any give to it. So now if I need to get some cleaner edges for the stones or whatever, it's a little bit easier. That doesn't mean you have to do this. I do it on the stretch ones too. But for this particular painting with all the edges and things, I wanted to use a harder surface, just a choice I made. And then I have a sort of a, a medium value gray, a little, you know, medium light. So here we go. Let's get started. We'll start up here as we normally do with our sky. We'll take our number 10 bristle brush. And we're just simply going to block in a, a real pale 
You don't want your sky to be dominant. So just take your gesso, I've got it down here, and just kind of scrub it on like this. And by the way, if you don't have a sketch to follow and you've sketched that on your canvas, remember what we talked about in one of our last, or, you know, our last series on the windmill? If you take a picture with your smartphone, uh, that way you have the sketch documented. But since I have a sketch this time, I'll just use it. But if I didn't have that, I would just, I would take a picture because you're going to lose some of that sketch as you start doing this, kind of, you know, blocking it in. And that way you don't lose your, you know, design. I'm going to redo it. What I'm going to do here, just for safety's sake, I'm going to take this all the way down here, just in case I decide not to put those buildings in there. So what I'm going to do now, just put a little bit of ultramarine blue, a smidge of purple. Just get me a really pale sky. And a lot of brush strokes, just kind of keep it, because this is going to be an old building. Now keep that in mind. That's really critical as we develop this painting. It's going to be very old looking. We want it to have a lot of texture. We're going to have broken stones, cracks, little spots in the stucco that's, you know, peeling off how it does. I, I can't help but remember in the early days of my career, uh, I moved to Taos, New Mexico, and I actually lived in a, an adobe house, and my gallery was right downtown. I mean, I was living the life, I thought, there, but I was in a, a really old part of the, the town, and my gallery was all made out of that old stucco and those bricks, and then when I built a small house, we made it all out of those uh, mud bricks that they make out there and sun dry. It was really fun. All right, so there's a soft, simple, plain sky. Now, I'm not saying you couldn't come in and put a real wispy little cloud in there later, but we'll see about that. All right, now that that's done, I am going to go ahead, just for the sake of having some color in the background, take a little green, a smidge of purple, and I'm going to go back here and I'm going to put some distant smushy trees. So in the event that we don't put any buildings, at least our trees will already be here. So you just, well, that's wet. Pretty much treat it like an oil painting. Just kind of scumble that in there to give you just a tad bit of distance. That way you just kind of err on the side of caution. And then I'll have just a little darker value right in front of it. So it looks like there's about two values. And we can come back there and play with that later. All right. That's all we need for now. Now rinse that brush out. Now we're going to get to the main body of the painting. Now our first couple, three sessions, as you know, are always going to be basically underpainting. But because this is what it is, and it's close up right in your face, and I don't want to detail it to the point where it gets real busy, we're going to have a lot of brush stroke going on here, but they'll be quick, loose, and free. I want to have a light source coming in from the left-hand side. So that means this section, this section, and you know, this part of the building will be your sunlit side. And depending on where the sun's at, we may have some strong cast shadows or we may not. I'll kind of reserve that for when we get to it. So I'm gonna start up here now on this wall. I'm gonna take my number six bristle brush right down here and still using my dirty palette. I know a lot of you still fuss at me for 30 years now since we started the show. I get all kinds of comments about my dirty palette, but it works. And when I have students that come from all around the world now literally to our studio and they see the dirty palette and they try it and they see how well it works, they're blown away how important a dirty palette is. So now what I'm doing is I'm just taking sort of a mottled, see it's just kind of burnt umber, a little bit of blue, a smidge of purple, and of course your white. And all you're going to do now is underpaint with quick, decisive, scrubby strokes. And it's all you can do. You're going to love this. It's a lot of fun. It loosens you up, makes you feel good about getting paint on there without having to be so careful. I think we all like that. I don't know about you guys, but I mean, as much as I love to do some detail, like when I do my birds and animals, which is kind of how I began my career, you know, it's fun, but this is fun because you can loosen up. And so you want it to be different values. See, I'm smushing in lights and semi-darks. And when I talk about dark on this part, 
that's what I'm talking about. Darwin.